Okay, hi. Today we're going to work on a interpretive watercolor or acrylic paint or gouache. The medium doesn't matter. And here's an example, let me turn it around, of what I did. And I'll show you what I've done. I'll show you the materials that were used and some of the suggestive tip materials that you can use. The uh, paper, this is watercolor paper. So hopefully this will help you with this next project of doing your own personal interpretive painting. It can be either a landscape of a city scene or it can be a landscape of a countryside but it should have something that shows your own personal interpretive way of looking at it. So in this one, I'll talk to you what I've, what I've done in here to, give, to make this one my own interpretation of this, of this landscape. So quickly, the colors that we'll be using will be the primary. So we'll use the, the yellow, the red, and the blue and do most of our mixing with that and also you know that all the colors have value so in your landscapes you can use any of these colors I like to use like with the greens use the analogous colors that's the colors that are say like the secondary color green then the yellow green and the blue green and maybe sometimes some blue in the trees and then also using a shade, you know, maybe adding a little or even adding a little bit more yellow. So you can really create some interesting things. And then also the, the other added thing that you can do is to take um, using your analogous colors on this side of the color wheel is to drop in a, a color on the opposite side, which is the complement. So from here over to here would be the complement. So you can do that. And so when I work on the landscape, I'll show you how I use this series of analogous colors here and then how I'll probably drop and drop in a, a um, complement or a split complement, maybe something over here. So it's a lot of different things we can do, or we can even use a lot of colors that we in within a value so we could use colors that are within this this value some of the tools that I have but I'm not going to use all of these tools so I may use the toothbrush the uh, exacto knife or a razor blade it could be any any type of razor blade but I like these to do some scraping And they have different types of brushes, like this one, it's the long handle. Let me zoom out on the camera a little bit. So this is the long handle. Long handles are usually used for working on canvas. And the short handles like this are usually used for watercolors. But they can be used either way, because if you're traveling, you may need a a short handle brush like this. So this one right here is a flat because it has a flat top to it. This is the flat. And this brush is often used to feather things out. So a lot of people have these and they do little different effects with them. So I, I don't use them a lot but I may use this one. I usually like one larger brush, so I'll probably use that. But if you don't have that, if you have something about this size, it's still good. We're not going to work big. And this is a round. I could probably do most of my work with this one brush. So I'll show you, I'm going to limit them. And also, if you're working with um, acrylics, you may want to use a palette knife to mix your paint. They, they make them in plastic, and 
also they make them in um, metal. I choose this one I've had for a long time. It's a metal one. It's easier to work with. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to actually use. I may use these colored, watercolor pencils. So I'll show you exactly what I'm going to use. I'm not going to use all this stuff. So I narrowed it down to these few tools. I'm going to use, I'll probably use the X-Acto knife. I'm going to use a, a wide brush, like a wide flat. This one happens to have a wedge to it. A shorter, a thinner flat. Two rounds and a yellow pencil and a t probably a toothbrush. And I may do a little bit with these uh, watercolor pencils. So, and the eraser that I, my favorite eraser is a kneaded eraser. It's more like a, like a piece of putty in your hands and you can sharpen it. And then I'm going to put some, I'm going to put a border around with some of this blue tape. It could be blue or white. So I'm going to set up my paper now and then I'll come right back. So here's my paper of choice. I'm going to use, uh, this is a watercolor paper. Uh, for you, if you don't have watercolor paper, you can use the multimedia paper. I would suggest not using the uh, sketchbook paper because it's so lightweight. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a border around this, around the edge. So I'm just going to lay some of this tape down. It always, it makes it, it gives it a nice finish at the end of the day. So I'm going to put, I'm going to use this as a guide, the edge of the paper as a guide. And you'll see how nice it'll look when you finish your painting. And then you take that tape off at the end, that nice reveal that you'll get. So. I'm going to go ahead and finish taping this. You don't need to watch me do this. Okay, so the, the other thing that's going to be necessary in working with a landscape is to pick out a reference. So I have like these two landscape references that I'm going to work from one or the other. And probably what I'll do first is I'll make a couple of little sh small um, thumbnail sketches, probably just some value sketches so that I'll know which direction I want to go in because I probably won't use all of this, just a, you know, a portion of it. And just maybe a, little, a section of this the way I want to, I may re, redo it. So we can reinterpret um, an idea. So the colors don't have to be the natural colors. You can have different types of colors or brighter colors or you can, I could change these um, greens to oranges, make them change this to an um, fall scene and use more of the uh, complement. It's interesting that in the fall, uh, it's like nature just says, okay, I gave you green during the summer. I'm going to give you comp the complement in, uh, in the fall. So, you know, I can switch around to doing that or I can change the time of day by changing the color or make it more bluish. So, uh, so that's what I'm going to play around with next. I'm just going to Make a little quick sketch. Probably do most of the work with these watercolors and the gouache uh, or combinations. Sometimes you can use like the, all of them. So you don't have to stick with one medium. You can use more than one medium. So here I have watercolor. And like I was saying earlier, I may use these water soluble pencils and I'm, I may use this acrylic paint. So, and you notice I'm not using the expensive stuff. I'm not going into my expensive stuff. These aren't expensive brushes. These are inexpensive brushes. These are all, um, we call like nylon or brushes. They're, they're not water color uh, sable brushes or anything like that. But I kind of like these brushes because they have a lot of spring to them and it's easier to paint with these. So you have these. So just like I had you do before, I do it also. It's not like, oh, make the thumbnail. That's like, that's not punishment. So I have these little templates here that I can use over and over again. 
Sometimes I make little watercolors too. So they call these like trading card size. People sell these on eBay and they do pretty well with these people. I guess it's become like a fad. So I'll try one this way too. Now again, with thumbnail sketches, this is just for ideas. It's not for you to, to really get carried away and try to do some complicated uh, rendering here. So, so I'll just look at these two here and I'm gonna go back and look at my reference. So I'll play around with one in here. So like for the trees, just as they look, they're just like basically like sticks like straight forms here and I think like over here I'll probably leave a little bit of this space let me zoom in a little bit more so here so I look like to look at the dominant shape almost like when we were making the um, symbols you know like the big shapes and how we were diagramming things. So if we want something to go back in space, you know, we could put in the tr look at the triangle, see if we can get that triangle to form in here. So, and then I'll say like, I want some darks here on the side. Maybe do a little dark passage right here and here in the shading under the tree and the shading under the tree over here. And then over here, it's kind of just maybe a little bit lighter. And this is kind of like going, the tree would go all the way out here, but we're going to break the picture plane. So that'll bring this part of this tree out closer to the edge a little bit. So let's see if I can change, use that same scene, but now use it in a vertical format. And you cut some of it out. So let's see, it, it, it actually maybe it's time for me to do a something more vertical. So like, it looks like I'm just scribbling, but this is enough kind of information to get me started. kind of get my started. And let's take a look at the other one. We'll take a look at this scene here and see if there's something I might want to do in there. I kind of like the way the light, this is natural. It almost looks like this was a photo, but it was a, a time of day towards the evening. It created these blues in there, which were kind of interesting. So the reflection, you know, the reflection is usually going the opposite direction. One going one direction, going this direction. The trick here, if you have a reflection, is that try to do part of the reflection and then do the the reflection. Don't wait, do the top and then try to do all the reflection. You might miss something. So here, I can kind of like follow these two areas right here and maintain my reflection. So if I do the tree here on land and then the reflection down here and this one's going to be softer and then at the water line here a little bit darker here going across in the water line and it shows like a double horizon like the part of the island here and then it's going back in space back here in the background so all this stuff that's in the background when I paint it I'd probably paint the background first, paint all the big stuff first, I'll keep everything pretty simple. So, so now I have like these three rough ideas and so I'm going to look at them and make a decision of which one I want. And that's if I don't make another one. So what I decided to do just for the benefit of the camera and for you is I'm going to work in a horizontal format so I'll use this one right here you know and on the computer we call this one um, 
landscape and this one portrait so I'm going to use the landscape format and it sort of like follows this so now I have an idea um, I can go into this now and draw now for me I could draw a looser sketch and then work into it but when you're starting out you're probably better off working your drawing a little bit more so I'm going to do the same thing so I'll start out with the big simple shapes first so if I'm looking at something like this I'm going to look at the big shapes that's what it kind of like get those big shapes in there so here I just kind of look at that big shape keep this simple the limb the big the trunk here the tree the trunk back here this tree this trunk here and you really don't see a whole lot over here you can see a little bit of the the evergreen peeking out through the side here and then there's a road coming in across this way and then the shadows I think the shadows will really help out with this with this landscape is to see where those the shadows are in the landscape and because we're using paint uh, you can draw a little bit more if you're using acrylics you can draw a little bit heavier if you're using watercolor I would suggest make sure you draw light so I'll be drawing with uh, I'll be working with watercolor at least to start and then I may switch over to the gouache so here I'm going to put in a little bit of this color here I mean a pencil just the drawing and be sure that now these are a little straight so I'll make, try to make it so that it's a little bit more like nature so that what I found like with the trunks of the trees they, they start out thick at the bottom but as they t go up they taper out they're sort of like the human body like the human body it starts out the mass is in the arm and the muscles at the top and then as it goes down to the fingers you think of the fingers as these are like the, the limbs and the little branches but it, the wrist is tapered out and the forearms puff out a little bit more so you know the tree is similar and does the same thing it moves out so I'm gonna continue drawing and then I may even put this at a little bit faster speed Okay, so I'm going to start um, with the lightest areas first in the background. Knowing that, you know, looking at this reference, it's just a little bit of light blue in the top, maybe a little light blue in here. But all the rest of it is fairly dark, so I know that I can put down all of the light colors first. So I'm just going to block them in. I'm not. So I'm going to take a little bit of this blue. Get a lot of the blue here, and the first layer. Of, don't worry, really worry about it too much. I'm going to take the bigger brush and just kind of like lay some of that color in. I'm going right over the area where there would be. You know, I'm not going to let it kind of loosely go down. Now the idea. So we call it interpretive painting so try not to be too literal with everything because I'll end up messing it up so there's a little bit of the blue there 
and there was a little bit of blue down in here too so in the blue and actually adds to the atmosphere you know some of the light blue light so I'm gonna just kind of like lay some of it in there this is watercolor so I'm just kind of washing it in the white of the paper is what makes it light if you're using acrylics then you'll mix your paint with some white paint to make it a light blue so I just kind of like wash some of that in there and now I'm going to take a little yellow and mix it in with my blue a little bit more to make a green I just want a light green and I'm going to wash some of that in here so in the beginning stages I'm just going to lightly wash in some of that color wash that right in a little bit more blue what's nice about the color is you you start from the lighter color to the darker so the more blue I add to the yellow I can make more of a bluish green or I can make more of a really yellow light yellow green so here in the trees at the top where they were light I can go ahead and wash some of that in and not worry too much now it looks like an abstract right now so I'm kind of like letting you see one of my little trade secrets no secrets I'm just showing you some of the things that I do when I'm painting and they don't always start out looking like the real what they're gonna look like it starts out what we call like the messy the messy stage so I'm a little yellow in there and then some more color right in there so just a little bit of that yellow in there so let that gonna let that dry let that dry a little bit okay so this is kind of this is dry and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in with a little bit more uh, green and I added a little red just a little bit of the red to the green just to kind of make it a little bit more earthy and to darken it a little bit so I want to do something in interpretive you know I don't want it to look I'm gonna try not to make it look too much like the real thing so I'm gonna play around with the brush strokes maybe I'll do some kind of like Van Goghish brush work so I'm gonna use the top of my brush and just kind of like maybe just use lines kind of like little gestural lines I think I'll maybe I'll do the whole thing with little lines and you can do whatever you, you know kind of play around with the paint you don't have to do this but I just just, just kind of play with the lines kind of like kind of like dance around on the paper a little bit more blue So just a little bit more so different greens in here some more kind of play and then like maybe a nice big patch in here And a little bit of an idea where my direction of my shadows are going to be later I can go ahead and put those in and you probably noticed that I didn't put in the trunks of the trees this makes it more this makes it fun I'm going to try to make it put in too much detail right away So right now I'm just working with two colors, blue and blue and yellow. This is a little bit more of a blue green. And the blue green and and this is more analog analogous, you know, because like it's all in the that same family. They would be close to each other. 
on the color wheel. And this is something I had to learn later that it didn't, you don't really need to put in all that detail right away. You just kind of like play a little bit and let the painting, let it grow. So here, the lightness of the leaves at the top, I'll leave those alone, the highlight areas alone and go into the darker passages. We add a little blue in there. We gotta bring that up towards the, this area right in here. Play around a little bit. You hear me saying that? Because you need to have fun while you paint. I'm gonna use the tip of the brush. And let's see, put a little bit more of that. Now one of the things a lot of people end up doing is like when they do the trunks, they they go for brown, but geez, if you really look at them, they're not brown. They're usually like gray or murky green. In this case, even looking at this reference, it's not really. We'll just do a few of these down here, the base. Let some of them go through the leaves, some of them behind, and some of them in the front. So I try not to do everything. Just let dance on the top of the brush. Let the brush do the work. Springy. Okay. So, so now I'll just play around with that. And you can almost start to see it, the landscape to begin to appear in the scene. And this is this painting right here is basically very, very analogous. You know, most of the color you can see that these colors would be let me get my color wheel. I'm not using my color wheel but right now, but most of these colors are like right in here on the color wheel. And it's kind of like, I call it like dance. So we say like interpretive process. And so I'm gonna let this dry for a minute and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna switch now. I was working with watercolor. Now I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna use the gouache because it's a little bit more opaque. And many of you will be using acrylic paint and watercolor paint. So the gouache is a little bit more like um, acrylic paint. The only difference is that it can be re-wetted. So here, the paint that I started that's still in my palette, I can go back and just by adding a little bit of water to the paint, I'll just show you. Just by adding a little water to this paint, I can reuse this paint again. So. I'm going to play around. Um, this is an interpretive painting, so we're going to try and do some things, see if we can play around with the uh, brush work, um, the idea, and see what, see what we can come up with. Also, I'll show you, this is the value chart. We've all, some people will make these value charts and try to figure out why did they bother making the value chart. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. So you can see that although these are different colors and these are grays, that every color has its own value. So if I bring this over this color right here, you can see that this is pretty close. The yellow is probably close to this color in here, the value. So if I mix all of my colors to this value, I can place them next to that color. Let's see. So this value 7 is close to this value right here. Uh, see that you see that value seven is too much lighter than this green here. 
but when I bring this value here they're pretty close you can see how close they are so you can mix your colors especially if they're analogous like this you can go from value or you can shift from color to color so let's play around a little bit okay so the reason why I like to play, leave start out with the lighter colors like the light blue in the background I'm probably just going to leave that and there's some interesting things that you are not able to see on the camera but like the paint has what we call granulation so it's like little fine fine dots in the paint so I kind of like that I like what happened here with some of the color this is where I was playing around with the brush marks here so I think I'm gonna go in here in this area and do some more uh, grab my reference there's my reference. I think I'm going to play around with some of these patterns that the leaves make. And one way to do that is just to we take some of my yellow, bring some of my yellow onto my palette. So I have my yellow, a little bit of that yellow. I'm going to probably bring a little bit more. And like I always say, like if you want to make it lighter, I'll start with the lighter color and just put a little dab of my brush into it and mix like a lime or a light yellow green. Yeah, there we go. So already this is not natural. So already I know I can do something interpretive. So I think I just kind of like play around with this the leaf patterns in here. One thing about gouache is like oh, it's so uh, like it, it's opaque, so it'll cover. You can go into it and cover things. So I'm just kind of like dabbling around. So I like um, Yeah, just kind of like dabbling brush work around and so that the painting can move fast I'm going to do both uh, add a little white to it so adding the white changes this to what we know as a tint but it sort of like neutralizes the color a little bit takes some of the brightness out of it so there's two ways to make a lighter color lighter. You know, you could make the color light by using yellow, or you can take the yellow and the lime and then add a little white to it and still keep it at that same value. So I'm just gonna so I'm gonna just kinda like work with these lighter colors first. So if you're doing a landscape, just kind of play around. You you don't have to do a a, a landscape like I'm doing here. You could do like a really simple landscape to start you can do a beach scene or some mountains in the background that kind of thing so you can see how that the yellows glow there and I kind of like what's going on in here actually I kind of like the simplicity of this painting but I'm just pushing it a little bit more so here, sometimes if you see something that you like in the picture, you can just go in and enhance it a little bit more. So I'm just going to just go in here and not going to really change it a whole lot, but I'm just going to go in here and just enhance it. Just enhance some of this stuff, just bring it out a little bit more. And this neutralize it a little. You know, what you can't see is like with the gouache it, it can leave a little bit of texture of the paint so a little bit of the thickness and thinness of the paint which it's kind of hard to see but you see I'm just kind of like playing with the brush let the brush do the work for me like that and let's see so I'm going to add a little just a touch of the red, just a touch, and bring it in here, and a little green. 
Oh, that's too much green. I need more red. Yeah. I need a little black. Kind of neutralize it a little bit. And it looks similar to this color, looks similar to this color over here that I kind of liked, so I'll just bring it in over here. And just move some of that paint around. And you can probably tell already that it's really not much, a little bit like it, but not quite. You know, I really changed, made this a little bit, a lot grayer over in that area. So on my reinterpretation. So let me see. A little more color here. Something there. And I think I'll bring in some darker values in this passage back here in the background. So I'm going to take some of the blue. I'm going to actually I'm going to start with the green first, and then I'm going to bring some of the blue into it so I can get me a nice blue green. Let's see what we can do. That's more of a blue green, and they'll neutralize it a little bit by adding some black. So this will really punch it. dabbling around so let some of the colors shine through and then you can always go back with gouache you like to start out with a little bit dark here and then go back and I'm gonna put a little more black in here To those shadows now that I made this pretty dark here Let me bring in some of those shadows and you can see like this by adding more water to the gouache it makes it like watercolor and you can do the same thing with acrylic too acrylic doesn't have to be thick all the time it can be a little thin thick and thin so I put the shadows in And I'm just using that gray, the black in there, just to neutralize it a little bit. Some of these shadows. So let's see, let's bring that in here. Now you might think that I'm just, that I, as I'm working, I'm sort of like improvising. So I think. Although in the scene, a lot of this stuff is in the background. I'm going to leave some of this lightness in the background here. But this tree here that's in the foreground, I'm going to make this one a little bit bolder. So I'll just kind of like... Those leaves here, just kind of like dabble dabble. Like that. Lay my brush down. Kind of let, let my brush do the work. Here, 
I mean, if you notice that I haven't really gone in here and done any real serious detail, it's just no real strong detail yet. And let's see. So I'm gonna play around. I did a little bit of, um, I made a little path here. So I'm gonna go back into this and bring out the path. And the way I'm gonna bring out the path is I'm gonna paint the, the ground and leave this alone. And I wanna show you a little trick. In case sometimes you get into something and you say, oh man, I can't move, I can't change this. You know, so like right here on the path, I may want this shadow, part of the shadow to be a little bit lighter. So what I'll do is I'll take my brush with plain water and just and go over it like that. And I'll take my paper towel and wipe it like that. And see, and then it lightens it. You can take some of the paint off. do that so that's the nice thing about with the watercolor too so if this was acrylic you tried to do this you can do the same thing around the areas in here so I can go in here if I wanted to lighten up some areas in there go like that and lighten some of those areas go in there and pull stuff out so you can go back and forth so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna go back in here and work in here. Okay, so uh, one of the things about, uh, especially with uh, paint, is that, you know, sometimes we focus in on the actual, like the tree, like the, the actual tree itself. And then we forget about the spaces in between. So by going in, and I'll show you, like say like by going in here, in the negative spaces, I can, kind of like carve out and bring out the the other images so I'm going to do it with, with a darker darker area down towards the bottom just to give you an idea and, uh, okay so so say here under this tree here I can go by the trunk of the tree and kind of like work around in the negative spaces. So here, now I bring out that trunk by just kind of like working around in the negative spaces. Bring out that tree trunk there. Especially if I was painting like dogwoods or something like that, I would think about if I want to bring out this tree here, then what I'm actually doing is trying to paint the negative spaces to bring this out. It seems like I'm painting this, but I'm actually trying to bring this out. So I, I work around that and just kind of like bring out the tree by working the negative spaces around that tree. So I want to play around with some blue and so I had like these two palettes like this one here has the lighter colors in it and this one here has a little bit darker colors in it so I'm gonna grab a light blue it's like a cer cerulean kind of a sky blue but I'm gonna put it down here Bring in some of that blue. Just kind of play around. And sometimes you can just put in colors that, you know, if you see a little color someplace, you know, go ahead and put it in there. Play with it. So it's sort of that little, it's not a stream of water or anything, it's just like kind of like implied color there and then uh add a little bit of a wash of blue in here just to bring in some of that atmosphere 
and bring some of the blueness of the atmosphere in the background. So I'll just add a little bit of that, a little bit of that blue in there. Bring in some more right there. So kind of like get that to kind of like go back into the background. And I think I'm going to enhance this a little bit. So I'm going to grab this palette. Add a little bit more, maybe a little more tone into this tree here. That's too dark. So I'm just going to add a little more water to it. And just bring that in there. Just at the bottom. The light's going to hit the top of the tree, so I'll just kind of like bring in a little tone in there. And not everywhere, just kind of like around. in there like that and I'm working today with the demo because I think this is much better and easier to see uh, how something would be done so again I'm gonna let this oh yeah let's go over here so we were saying we're gonna go in to the path want to bring out the path a little bit You can, if you probably notice that most of my colors, these are mainly kind of really analogous colors. So let's let's throw in a compliment because I haven't really put any compliments in here. Let's see in the foreground. I'm gonna grab a compliment. Now you see how the path is coming out because I worked around the path and left the path alone. So I'm going to grab a compliment. This is a strong orange. I have no idea where this is, what's going to happen here, but let's just bring it in. I'm just going to, and I'm going to draw it across the page like this, kind of like. So we just bring in a little bit of that compliment. Bring in some, t bring in some heat. Mm. And you can see what happens when you bring in that complement in the foreground. It just really brings everything out. See. So let's see here. I'm gonna bring in some more water, so it'll kind of blend it into the green a little bit. Some of that spritz. Look at color. And you see, like, I just kind of like let the lines kind of flow around. Let these lines just kind of flow around. And actually, we can bring in some lines that go across the path, too. So let's try a, more real, a light wash with this color across the path. Make it lighter. And just like let it go right across the path like that. And back here in the background. Grab some gray. And make a little bit of a gray and just kind of like this. Let it run across the bottom. Background. So now you got this kind of like this flowy color. And so all this is kind of like really interpretive, you know, you wouldn't see that in nature like that, that red, that strong, especially not that strong a red. So let's see what happens if I just throw a little, a couple of those little reds in there, right in there like that. And this is like a strong green. Now what happens if I take right with that green instead of mixing a blue green, if I just take 
a pure blue, right? Because we know like with the values, if the values are close, and if I bring those two blues together, you'll get what we call optical mixing. So I'm gonna take some of this blue here. This is like a strong blue. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of this right in here. And you can hardly see it, but in real life, when you see this thing, if you see this painting that we ever meet in life, you'll see that that blue really helps to enhance the green. They're close in there, close in value, but just by putting in that in there, I don't know if they can see it. I'll see if I can take a a picture where you can see it better. So I just brought in that blue. Now over here, if I try that same thing up in here, I probably could use I could use that blue. Let's see, I'll add a little, grab some of that paint. And just add a couple of, just a little couple of stripes, little dabs here and there of the blue. Gives it a little bit, enhances the painting a little bit. Like that. So we got that foreground, background. And so, the next thing I'm going to do is now, now I'll go in and put a, do a little details. I'm going to go back into it and we'll do the trunks of the trees. And that's why I leave, I leave the trunks of the trees last so that if I have to have some of the branches or some of the popping out and then going back in behind the leaves, I can do that. I have more control of that. Okay, so I mixed a gray green color. A lot of times we try to mix, I would say like when you mix all those primaries together, you'll come up with a gray. So here I mix this kind of like, it's like a gray green. It makes, it's nice for trees, trunks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this way over on this side and, and move my way over to this side. So I'm just gonna do the base of this trunk. Let a little bit of it peep. And then here at the top, I have a little branch pop out. Some this. Some of these branches coming, peeking out. Here's another trunk of the tree. Here's another one, the base. And just bringing this in here. peek out, go back in, leave some of the branches. So here, go back in here like this. And just like taper it out at the top. And here's it going to the bottom of the tr trunk of the tree. Just kind of let it go across like that. kind of like go start out real thin and then thicken just press down the brush like that so I bring it in like that When I 
finish doing this, moving through like this, I see something here that I should have brought in. And they look so much better uh, when there's shadows at the base of the trunk. So we're going to go back in and put some shadows at the base of those trunks. Same here. We'll go back in here. Now if I painted the, the limbs and the trunks of the trees first, and I couldn't do what I'm doing right now. Kind of like letting those leaves pop out. And actually what I'm doing is I'm painting the negative spaces. So I can go in and paint around it. And then they're up here and just kind of let that flow right out. So you can see that you can kind of basically see the magic happening right before your eyes. Here. This is good, I mean, it's a little more work on the teaching end, but this is good, because once I do it once, this will be ready for next semester. So here, the base of the trunk. And I, I love painting, so it's not, this is not a job. This is like a joy, for me this is a joy. This is really dark green. You might say, like, why, why bother putting in the trunk in here? But it, it does make a difference. So I'm going to put the trunk in, in here. And some branches. And you see, like, you can just, like, really have a ball, I say. You know, you can add, you know, you can add extras. But this is where the detail stuff comes in. We do this last. But the painting had to go through its early stages so we can get to this stage where we can kind of like put in these little touches, little touches like that. And then when you get that, so we'll put a little bit more. We'll see something happening here. A little bit right here, a little bit. some branches sometimes the branches drop down a little bit and drop this one go in okay something over here going back to this branch now believe it or not I am improvising or I'm interpreting like where things should go you know I'm just now I'm in the paint zone you know as you get to the paint zone you just kind of like you just kind of let it happen let things happen so I just once I get here now the only thing I'm going to do now is just put a little bit of shading under the bar the base of the tree, what I've learned over the years is that usually it needs a little shading under the base so it plants the trunk of the trees down. Okay, so now I'm just going to put in a little bit of tone under these, the base of these trees right here. And if you probably notice, like if I run them down like this, then 
it makes this look like this is going like downhill. So that's kind of cool. I'll let them look like it's going like downhill a little bit. And then we shift the plane, the surface. And so in here, we're going to make this one and soften that. And then over here too, a little, put a little shading from this tree up here. Like that. I don't want to mess with it too much. some of this yellow so we can keep that brightness and I'm just going to drop a few of those some of that yellow in there again and what's nice this is gouache so I can paint you can do the same thing with acrylics you can paint over it you can, you can paint over the dark passages a little bit it gives a little interest I'll just bring some of that over here. And then bring it right. By doing this kind of gives it some movement. Looks like diagonal. These lines are like moving in the diagonal way. So it gives it that movement. I'm gonna grab some of this. I'm just gonna grab the white, pure white, and just bring it right in here. Kind of like highlight a little bit. Bring that in here like that. So this kind of like this movement thing going, same thing here. So I started out with this kind of like this brush strokes going in here and this movement going across the top. So. I'm going to let this dry and I'll show you other tricks that I have up my sleeve in the, in the future. But I wanted to share this with you today. So you can see that I have like my analogous colors. You can see that I brought in some of the like the blues with the with the greens and some of the grays here. We grayed them out. We made some tints. We used some tints. And then we brought in a complement down here towards the bottom. So is the landscape like this one? Not really. It's a new painting. It's a different painting altogether. So it's been, it's like the, your own personal interpretation. So you can find a nice reference and then do your own interpretation. So the fun part now is, is the unveiling. This is why I always like to put a little bit of tape down. I'll show you. So this is, we're finished the picture. So now we do the unveiling. So this is why I like the blue tape because it just makes everything look so much better. Gives you that nice finish. At the end of the day, it gives you a nice border, a nice presentation, and it just makes your painting look so much better. So 
that's why I go through the process of putting, you know, tape down, putting the border down. And you don't need a mat. I can put these in with the rest of my watercolors at the end of the day. If I want to present them to somebody, I can present them. All right, and the only thing now is just to sign my name. Enjoy your project. Um, don't rush through it. This didn't take that long, but enjoy it. Do your own thing. Be interpretive with your project. Have fun with your watercolor.